What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video we'll be taking a look at Zorin OS 15, the beta, and so um, I've seen this distro before and it's pretty nice and um, this is, I feel like it's uh, judging based off of its uh, interface is geared towards new users who are coming from Windows 10 but you'll see that it also offers different layouts so um, but essentially this is still the beta so it's not the actual release but essentially um, it's based off of Ubuntu 18.04.2 um, it also now includes um, a night mode feature and it's also it also has the ability to connect to Android devices and sync notifications share files and send messages and stuff like that which is pretty nice and it also has Flatpak support and it's available by default so when you initially try this out it's going to uh, give you two options to either install it or try it and so here we have the installer and so I'm not actually going to install this uh, I'm just going to give you kind of an idea of what it looks like and so here we have the updates that we can install in third-party software for graphics and drivers and whatnot so seems fairly straightforward I'm sure the next step is um, for partitioning and whatnot um, but yeah like I said using a virtual machine so uh, I won't actually be installing this but um, looking at it right away it looks very nice very simple uh, definitely loving it uh, with the right click here you can have your options the pretty basic options you can open up the terminal again follows a very nice design I really like the title bar looks very nice all right and then you can also change the background pretty easily here so let's see what kind of backgrounds they have offered so um, looking at it again these wallpapers are definitely very suitable with what they have going on here I love the simplicity you have the nice wallpaper here with the name on it so I really like this wave one here but I'm just going to stick with the um, probably going to stick with the Zorin one for the sake of the video so when you do open up this you get basically your settings manager and so um, the appearance obviously handles the uh, wallpaper and whatnot but we also have options to handle um, the notifications Wi-Fi Bluetooth uh, pretty much the basic stuff and so in order to access the night mode that was mentioned you have to go to devices and right here you have the night light and this is pretty nice because night light is basically the uh, blue light filter that's very useful when you um, use your screen during the night it definitely helps the eyes it protects them and it strains them less so um, what's really nice about this is that apart from uh, simply using redshift uh, it's so much easier to adjust the color temperature um, and to also change your schedule which is really nice that it features a uh, manual option here to set the time um, and I think that this is really nice um, in comparison to redshift having to um, make a config and set that up and change the values from there this is um, very nice very convenient and of course there's also scaling for uh, high DPI uh, not really going to test that out but that's also good so these are basically the default settings and whatnot and if we take a look at the panel you can't really right click it um, but it comes with the keyboard layouts by default having the different versions for English and then there's of course your system tray gonna handle 
the sound axis, the settings, and also power off the system, which this actually looks pretty nice as well. Um, overall, I'm very impressed by the way things look. Uh, and then there's the calendar and notifications here. And there's also a do not disturb option, um, <laughs> which is actually very nice as well. Um, also, apparently this update improves stability and performance, so wouldn't really know about that, but you can take their word for it. So here we have the file manager. I'm assuming this is Nautilus. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like it, so correct me if I'm wrong. But again, you know, very slick, very nice design. Here you can change the way you want to view it. Then has Firefox for its uh, default browser. Um, the start menu is also very nice. I really like that apart from having um, the applications, which are also categorized, apart from just simply having them, um, and you can also search, so let's see, Firefox, very fast. Um, yeah, you also have your user, uh, I'm assuming user settings, yep. So you have your user settings, you have uh, your quick access to folders, which is very nice, and you even have your access to the software center, the settings, and activities overview, and on top of that, you can also log out and par off from here, and you can also do that from here as well. So this is a very nice menu. It has basically everything you would need from a menu, and again, it follows the uh, nice and simple look. So that's very nice. And so looking at, kind of getting a glance of what it has, you basically have, um, the, the essentials, it doesn't seem like it's bloated or anything. I mean, G parted. It has the settings, of course, the software center, which we're going to take a look at real quick, and also the Zorin appearance. So I'm going to open the, this up and I'm going to get right back to it because I want to take a look at the software, uh, the software center. But, you know, like I said, you know, doesn't really seem bloated or anything. Has the office suite or suit, however it's called. Has GIMP. Even has some games, which is nice. Simple text editor. This is probably G edit. Yep. And well, taking a look at this, this is the um, same software center that you would otherwise see and Ubuntu, but it says that I'm, uh, that everything's up to date, but I'm pretty sure it isn't. It's because I haven't installed it. So I'm assuming that I probably can, I can probably install some stuff, but I probably can't install everything. Um, but it would have everything you would need, you know, your browsers um, and I don't know whatever else you might consider is useful. So going back to this, now this is something that's um, very nice. Um, and I remember trying this out with the previous version and I really do like how they have these preset layouts essentially. So this is, um, as you can see, kind of a more Windows type uh, layout, but there's also Another layout, which again is kind of like a Windows type layout, um, but this time instead of having just simply uh, icons here, you have um, like I guess a taskbar. So they appear um, as bars. And this is pretty nice because if I have, say, like the files pinned here as an icon, um, like it's going to stay here, and every time I click on it, I can essentially create new windows and manage them from here instead of directly through the icon, uh, which is nice. So this is kind of like a more traditional um, look, and that's also, I think, with with Linux Mint, they had it this way, and then uh, they kind of changed it for what they probably think is more modern. Um, I personally like both ways, but again, 
it's preference and it's good that they have that as an option and so for the third layout this kind of takes a bit longer to load so um, it's going to take some time okay so this is actually pretty cool so the menu turns into a full screen menu as you would see in GNOME and also you have the activity switcher I think it's called and then the icons are actually in the middle um, and so that this is like it looks as though the taskbar is uh, kind of floating but when you when you use a application and when you make it full screen or when you maximize it the taskbar hides automatically or the panel hides automatically so um, you know it's it's pretty interesting how you know they have these uh, kind of uh, preset um, themes available and so I tried to select back to the default and so this might take a while so this is the only thing that I don't like about this third um, kind of option is that it takes a bit too long to load but while that's loading um, here you have also some icon options so you can choose whether you want to enable or disable them uh, and if you do choose to enable them we have the um, home trash mountain volumes network servers you know basically the typical stuff you would see and I'm really hoping <laughs> that this doesn't crash on me right now um, it's probably gonna crash on me so I'm probably gonna cut the video real quick alright so I had to restart virtual box but that's fine so um, essentially you have the icon settings like I said and also with the interface you can change if you'd like the title bar buttons to be to the left and I know some people definitely like that so that's very nice and convenient um, that you have these options so uh, that's that for this section so for the theme um, for theming options you have some really interesting uh, options here so um, just like with Mac you can um, Mac OS you can change the accent colors so um, basically as you can see these colors that would otherwise uh, be blue by default you can change them to be um, whatever color you'd like and also the file manager as you can see the icons change here accordingly um, for the so for this option you can I assume make it switch from light mode to dark mode depending on the time and so this is also how dark mode looks by default and I'm going to show you also how it looks with the according color so so the not only do the accents and the icons change um, but also the default color changes as well with a slight hint of whatever color you choose so this is this is pretty cool um, this is pretty nice um, but of course here you can change your um, your themes okay that looks kind of odd there we go so you can change your icon themes your application themes and the shell theme um, you can download custom ones of course and then there's the font settings and for the panel if you um, kind of wanna mess around with it you only have two options for the position which is kind of weird I know that most people don't put it on the left or the right but it is good to have so it's kind of odd that they don't have the other options and then you can change the size of it so this might freeze again I really hope it doesn't freeze again uh, but then again what can you expect it's on a virtual machine I'm sure the performance is going to be nice um, on an actual uh, like on actual hardware um, but that's fine, I'm not going to restart it this time, there's no point, um, because of course, you know, the rest of the settings are pretty basic. Um, I don't know why it doesn't have the show desktop button by default, um, that's kind of odd. Like, it's a nice feature to have, might as well keep it enabled by default, and then you can of course auto hide it and whatnot. So that's basically about it. Um, 
Of course, I didn't really get to explore everything, but I'm also not trying to make the video too long, trying to just cover the basics, um, give you an idea of how it looks, how it performs, and <laughs> keep in mind, uh, there we go, uh, keep in mind you won't really have these problems, at, at least not as, um, as exaggerated as the ones in this video, um, if you actually try this out on real hardware. So that was it. Let me know what you guys think about Zorin in the comments. Uh, let me know if you like it or not. And yeah, that was basically it. Thanks for watching.